Hi, Jillian. Hi, Amy. Oh, look at it. It's like so I know. It's like sparkles falling in the sky. Oh, it's good timing. Welcome to my outdoor classroom. We haven't gone there yet, but this is the path. I'm super excited. I teach kindergarten and first grade at East Montpelier Elementary School in East Montpelier, Vermont. All right. Jillian, did you have to put this path in? So this path was already here. Um, we had some trails that kind of go through our woods, but one of our parents um, made it a little bit wider. Okay. And cleaned all like the brush off, so it's a little bit easier for us to navigate. And East Montpelier owns this property behind the school? We do. We have a family who lives um, when you see my outdoor classroom, there's a house behind there. Um, and I just checked in with their owners to make sure that it was okay that we were behind there because I wasn't completely sure where the property line was. Right. Because um, there was a posted sign and they went back and checked in on, just to make sure and they said they were happy to have us back there. Oh, good. The, the, the sounds of joyful children yeah. all day. <laughs> And so you are, your school has chosen five, five days. For five full days. Five full days. And did families have a choice of 100% remote or five full days? Yes. Yes. And there's no spleen. So you have all of your students all the time. Yep. You don't have like five one day and nine the next day or something nope. like that. So I have um, 14 students this year. Okay. And six of them are first graders and eight of them are... Oh, all right. So you're doing a combined kindergarten first grade. Yeah, so I get to keep um, six of my kids from last year. So I'm all right. excited about that. This is my first year teaching uh, K-1. Yeah. I've taught for 15 years at either level, but not... Not a, not a, not a combined. Well, I think it seems like it's a good year to combine. It's great. Right? I'm really excited. Um, if you look over, you can't really see it, but to the right is our eco woods that we share um but this year we we're still sharing it but um at our school they gave everyone an outdoor space and i kind of had my eye on this space over here it did a lot of work but one of my dreams was always to have my own outdoor classroom because our eco space was amazing but we had to share it so i couldn't come out whenever i wanted right so this year the one great thing of the pandemic is my dream came true. I have my own outdoor classroom, so <laughs> And I love what greets everybody right away. Yeah, so one of the things we know about um, everything with COVID this year is a lot of hand washing. And we're a little bit further away from the school and trying to kind of figure out how do we wash hands. And I have an amazing parent group who, um, his name is Austin Kate, who is an engineer. And he built this water station for us. So it's got like a food quality jug at the top yep. um, that'll fill up once. And then each day I'll bring out more water. So I don't always have to be filling it up. Sure. Um, but there's a little valve up here to turn the water on and off. So the pipes don't freeze. And then... Of course. Because <laughs> you're wrong. You don't want that to happen. And then there's two pipes and there's a piece of wood in the middle. So two kids can wash at the same, same time. Same time on either side. Okay. Yep, being safe. And then on, built up on a platform, yeah. so for drainage and water and anything that might get spilt. Yeah, and then the drainage will go... Um, and gray water comes out down there. Yep. And then All there's right. a foot pedal. I haven't filled it up yet, so you can't see it, but they'll pump. And we have, we'll have a soap dispenser. We haven't put that out yet. And then they'll wash their hands. And then it'll actually be between here, there'll be uh, uh, paper towels. All right. And then... Uh, Paper towels will go probably like in a five gallon bucket yeah, so or we'll something that like that. Yeah. Yep. So we start school on Tuesday. So I'm still kind of putting some finishing touches on yep. our classroom. September 8th. September 8th. All Vermont schools. So um, this parent who's an engineer might want to drop plans for this. Yeah. And <laughs> he could maybe go into a little side business if he needs to. Yeah, we were talking about it and I said to Austin, I'm like, you know what? That's sounds like a great project for you to do this summer. <laughs> wow. So he was pretty excited to do that. So we're really thankful that we have this because I've always wanted to have water out accessible out in our outdoor classroom. Sure. We've always had to like lug it or if we just wanted water play, I would leave buckets out yep. to collect the rainwater. But now you're going to have water. His son, Kipton, who was one of my former students, he wanted to figure out how to get the rainwater into the... Oh, I bet into the 
jug. Yeah. That's a great STEM um, project for the students, and they could, maybe they could even build the mini ones. I'm already thinking of birch bark cones, like taking birch barks and making a funnel. Yeah, we thought maybe they might right? be filtered, though, because they have to wash them. Right. Hands, so. Yeah, well, you wouldn't do that, but like for the kids to make a small version yeah. of this, like a miniature version of it, and come up with those little design elements by testing it themselves. Yes. So I thought that was really cool. He's in sec second grade now, second grade. Wow. I just love this sweet little tree with the curves and the stones that the students put around it. See that? So that is done by some of the kids that came to help you. Yes. And that's what they do. Yeah. Like they are, ta they take ownership by, you know, decorating or placing things visually. And that caught my eye right away. That's one of the things when you, um, when we take a tour of the classroom, there's not a ton of stuff out because I really wanted it to be for the kids to like what little things did they want to create. So right. I didn't want to have a lot of like teacher made stuff for them. Sure. Like there yep. used to be a big teepee by this tree. One, we took it down because it wasn't safe. Oh, that's right. The huge teepee that's been here for years. Yeah. yeah. So we took it down. Um, also, we didn't really want kids congregating under it um, yeah. right now. Cause right. We can't do that. But also, I just wanted it to be their space so they could figure out what kind of nooks and crannies they wanted to make. Yep. And, um, yep. So if we move in, this is our um, fire circle area. We'll do, um, you know, snack time, lunch. We can have read alouds here. Um, we'll do some of our lessons here as well when we're outside. Tell us about these great little stools. So these stools I made for the students. We have um, in the past, you know, a lot of people use stumps, which is great. But sometimes in the winter, I notice that the tops of them get like kind of ice chunked and uh, it's not really a flat surface. So I wanted the kids to be able to sit on it. Right. Or they could sit on the ground and use it as a flat surface to write on or draw on. Oh, great. Do dual purpose. Have. And then I put a little shelf here on the bottom. So they'll each have their own um, toolbox out here, so they can put it under here, so they can um, have okay. it with them, so they don't have to bring it back and forth. Right. From the and this is recycled porch material. Yeah. So we had a porch that fell off our house, which was <laughs> fairly new, um, but we never ended up putting it back up. So I made all these with our porch yeah. wood. And I just think that's important for people to hear because we get we get into a space of cost, cost, expense, cost, yeah. and. Uh, Vermonters, as many people are, just to be uh, ingenuity, right? To like figure out like how can we use what we already have? How can we use what's left over in a pile? How can yeah, we keep costs low? And that this is something that parents, teachers, anybody can do. It's a really simple design. Cleaned up my garage as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The other thing is I had a student come for a tour yesterday who's one of my students from last year. And she said, well, where's our fire circle going to be? Because she was in our own eco wood, so she knows kind of some of the routines we have. So she wanted to make sure that we had our fire circle. So right. we went and found some logs and she... She set it up. She set it up for us so we have that. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> First and foremost, where's the fire area? We're going to have a fire. Where's the fire that area? Was, every student that I've had who's come to visit... Um, has wanted to know, are we going to have fire? So it just shows how important that is. Yes. And I said, we will be able to have them, but only when we have another staff member here. Because sometimes I'm not by myself. So right. um, with younger kids especially, I don't want to do that by myself for yep. our safety. Yeah. And I've been asking this to all teachers too. Is this... Is your circle a mask... Is this kind of like a mask-free break area? If children are sitting here in circle with the... Because the seats are all six feet apart or five-ish. So our school... Um, our district, when they're outside, if they're within six, um, if they're further than six feet, they don't have to wear their mask. So they okay. don't have to wear their mask. I might need to adjust some of the the stools to make sure that they're six feet apart, but they won't have to wear them when they're out here. Right. If they choose not to, some kids do still choose to wear them, and that's yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I just think it's a good um, to be able to sit sit have the children sitting in one place knowing that they're six feet apart that they can take their masks off and really have a true break mm -hmm. outdoors and one of the other things i'm not sure if this is the same for other districts but um, we're not allowed to sing inside inside so you can't sing or chant because of the aerosols um get magnified 
So outside, it's really important that we're able to sing and chant because um, that's a lot of the way that kids learned. Yeah. So thinking of being as a kindergarten or first grade teacher, not being able to sing to them, is like, <laughs> what? Yeah. So yeah. this is a place that we can do that. That we can sing. Yeah. Woo, thank goodness. Yep. <laughs> All right, tell us about this because this is new. This is new. This is what is different from eco and yes. outdoor learning during COVID-19. Yeah, so um, I just put this up, uh, actually finished putting it up today, but some of, we're going to have our lessons outside and we needed like kind of a place to, if we needed to show them, you know, some letters or example lesson for math or for science. Um, so we'll have a space that we can write things on. It's also magnetic that um, we can attach things to the board of pictures of things as well. This t I made a bunch of these tables as well. Again, it was a fairly large porch. Right. Someone's going to see this video and be like, so do you have any more of that leftover wood and <laughs> the design of your tables? <laughs> I actually got this online. My friend um, Darcy sent me a, a site that showed how okay. to do easy build tables. Yep. So once you know how to build it, it takes maybe about a half an hour to build a table. Great. Um, let's see what else. We have some extra stools in case we have some visitors that can join our group. Yeah. There's a shelf and on the little bottom. storage area down that here. Has Juliet Robinson. Yeah. yeah. Little... Juliet's inspired yeah. stones. stones. And then in here I have um, some field, field guides, guides and stuff. That Great. I'm hoping we can leave outside that they won't get. Um... Yeah. We'll see. I tried to pick the ones that were. Uh, that kind of had the plastic stuff on the outside. Yeah. Oh, and you have the caterpillar field guide yep, out. Very Perfect important. for the fall. Yep. Some bugs. Yep. That scat. Dangerous animals and plants. Backyard birds. Very important things for them to be able to check out Great. when they find something cool. Well, I'd be interested to know how waterproof, like how well the field guides stay in those containers. And mm. then I wonder what some, oh, you know, I wonder about a dry bag. A dry bag, yeah, the dry bags that you would use for camping or kayaking yeah. or water sports. These are beeswax bags. Oh. That um that I brought out that we can put some things in to see. Just kind of this is a lot of testing to see what works and what you can leave out here. Um, but this you can just put it in and hold it up and it stays shut, and then it's waterproof inside. That's a whole that's a whole lesson. That's a STEM lesson right yeah. there, like waterproof. Yeah. See what. What materials keep things waterproof? Yeah. So I would really like to leave as much stuff out here as I can instead of having to lug it back and forth right. so it's available for the kids to use. Right. And then we put a little clothesline up here so, you know, if we need to hang like our alphabet chart or, you mm -hmm. know, kind of things like that that they use in the classroom, yep. they'll be able to put up there as well. Or if they just have some really cool artwork. Yeah. Students work. Yeah. Student work to put up there as well. Great. So that's our circle area. You might notice around the circle area, we have all these kind of down trees. Yes. So when we moved into this spot, it didn't look like this. So even what you're standing on was just full of growth. So um, I kind of remember how thick this forest was yeah. and almost <laughs> impermeable. Um, lots of lower branches on the pines and things like that. So we moved all the dead wood and stuff um, to the perimeter and when we walk around you'll see it it kind of goes like a fence for the kids because um, I'm out here sometimes by myself and with kindergarten kids it's really important that they have boundaries um, one for a sense of security but also um, just so I know that everyone's safe so when they go around it they will just know that they can't go past yeah past almost oh and it goes all the way around your space. Yeah. That is just a brilliant use of waste of, well, not waste, but just of the leftover brush, yeah. right? And probably they'll be able to harvest some for building materials. I mean, there's certainly enough right there. <laughs> we had some friends who were, you know, helping clean brush and stuff, and they already discovered that they could make a cane with the brush. <gasps> what? I see it right here. Thinking of maybe course. For this year, we would have a one way. Yep. One way in and one way, one way out. One way out, yeah. Um, for this year. But it's amazing, like, as soon as what kids will do as soon as they get in the space. Yep. So that's not something that I had really anticipated. But 
that they'd start making tunnels through the <laughs> through the brush. One tried to make it to the other side, and I just have to say, we're going to just keep it. Right, we're going to keep on that. The goal side. is to keep it in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a very old fencing yes. technique <laughs> of long ago. You know, it was like stone walls and brush and leftover brush piles from clearing fields to keep sheep in. So. We've got 14 little little lambs. <laughs> and then some of the things we had to decide is what to put in the brush pile because there was a bunch of logs. We wanted to keep, um, there's some kind of old rotted ones. Sure. You'll see that are left out. We wanted to keep. They had some like beautiful moss on top. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, and yeah. also, you know, salamanders love those homes and other um, forest creatures and insects. Yeah. So we wanted the, for them to be able to investigate those while they're out here. Yeah. And I love how open this space is as far as for big movement um, away from the, you know, kind of the more focused classroom mm -hmm. space where everyone's going to be sitting and having some direct instruction and storytelling and snack and all of that, that this is really a wonderful space for big movement and play. And the space between the trees, lots of opportunity for like the ropes and pulleys and the carabiners and those little zip line kind of things. We have friend, uh, one of our students is going to bring us a slack line. Yeah. Because we have one over there, but we're going to leave that for them. And then also, each kid is bringing a um, camping hammock that we're going to put up through the trees. Um, we won't leave them up all the time because we want the space for them to be able to move. Right. But the hooks will stay up. Okay. Um, yeah. And attach them so they have a place to go if they want quiet time or if they want to do some silent reading out here. That just gets them off the ground, especially in the winter. Yeah. Where it can get a little chilly down yep. there. So I'm excited. I've never tried that before, so I'm going to test it out this year and see how it goes. There's quite a few other teachers that are going to be testing it out. So yeah. it would be great to do some documentation of just photographs and children's yeah. reflections on hammock and hammock time and get to share that amongst and teachers. And it kind of serves as a natural swing for them, so they kind of get that motion Yeah, as well. I they think um, in it. any kind of OT is, yeah. is good, <laughs> especially this year. year. We have a student who's in a wheelchair, so that will be great for them to be able to... Yeah. Yeah, and your path, I was noticing that the path that you guys have made to come in here could could be ADA accessible mm -hmm. without that much cost yeah. at all. That's one thing that I'm thinking about for next year is how to access the forest. For, yeah, actually know. this whole site, could it's, it lends itself to, to anyone who uses a wheelchair or has limited mobility. Yeah. Yep. So if we look around, there's not much out here. There's a ton of wall. There's a lot out here, but there's not a lot of things for Yeah. Them. But what we do have is you'll see there's three tables. Um, there's going to be two these. more. Um, just because this year, for distance wise, we want the kids, you know, if there was a lot of kids there, they'd all have to wear their masks. masks. Right, yep. But if they're further apart, then they can take their masks right. off. Um, so they, there's more, so more kids. Can and the, get these look like little laboratory, forest, mud kitchen yes. kind of thing. These are our forest labs. Forest Labs, all right. I like the change up. Yep. And then, um, let's see, what do we have in some of these buckets? There's like little beakers. We have some mortar and pestles. Um, paint brushes, some cups that they can just store under here. Um, on the other one over there, there's a scale. You see that, yep. And then we have, this is, so these ones are amazing. I yeah. I see through Amy, I think the other. Yeah, those big stone there. ones. But they're so heavy, so I'm so happy that I don't have to lug these around anymore. For the kids. <laughs> they have a permanent place out here yeah, now. They can just stay out here for the kids. And I like how you, I mean, you're really setting everyone up for, like, to be safe and healthy and successful and engaged. One table, two stools, two bins, six feet apart. I mean, that's, yes. they can work, they can, they can work and be focused and creative. And of course, before the kids use any of this material, they'll have to wash their hands. Yep. And then when they're finished, they have, they have to, to wash their hands. Yep. Um, I'm kind of excited we don't have to use hand sanitizer all the time, which is great. You know, that's great. an option if you don't have a hand washing station, which we're lucky to have. Um, just for, it dries out your hands quite a bit. So yeah, it does. <laughs> I'm excited that we have that other option. Yeah. And let's see, over here we have our firewood that's going to dry out for a while. Yeah, look but at that. in the meantime, it's, um, you know, going to be a nice insect hotel. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I use it. And I'm kind of excited to kind of see what the kids do with it. Like there's yeah. nooks and crannies. And yeah, and I see this as loose parts. I see this stuff is getting yeah, taken taken out of a nice wood pile <laughs> and it's used to nice build. Today. Or these round ones, these nice round yellow birch ones. I'd be putting a flat board across the top of that <laughs> and doing some balancing. So 
It'll be interesting to see what they choose to do. Yeah. You don't, it's not going to stay like that? No, it's not going <laughs> to stay like that. <laughs> I mean, if I was here with them, it wouldn't stay like that. You know that. <laughs> There's another table over there. There's another table. Things. Yeah, and with lots of space in between mm -hmm. so that children can still be playing and moving in their own way, but these tables can lend it, lend themselves to some focus and purpose. Yeah, I'm excited for all the space that they're going to have just to kind of roam. And yeah, good. yeah, it's great. It's a really beautiful space. And you've really, um, you've done so much work in here. So much work. And then... Um, we had this natural arch. I see that. That was already here. Yeah. One of the parents kind of shorted up on the, the back end. But we just thought it was so, such a beautiful entry into our it is. outdoor paradise. And then this big, long log. So I was pretty excited about this. That and looks like a, a beech tree. That's one of the diseased beech trees. Yeah. It has one the nectaria. What I love to do is um, bounce on logs. Of course. We had a big one over there, and the first thing they do when they come in the morning is they get up, and they just love to walk across it. And each kid that has come out to our outdoor space, this is what they do. It's the first thing they do. Yep. So what will what will your routine be like when you come out here? Speaking of first thing you do, so your daily routine is going to be students are going to show up, get off the bus, or get dropped off by parents, come inside. So they'll come inside and they'll wash their hands. Like at the beginning of the year, we won't come out here right away. Yep. Um, so as we kind of get into our routine, though, they'll come in to the classroom, wash their hands, put away their stuff, go to the bathroom, and then they'll come out here and we'll have our morning circle out here. Right, okay. Because um, in the classroom, we don't have circle areas anymore. Right. Because it's just not big enough, so we have tables. Um, <laughs> so whenever we can come out here to do our morning meeting, Right. That's the plan. So we can kind of build that community where they're you know, looking at each other instead yeah. of the back of someone's head. <laughs> right, exactly. That I mean, that just really strike. It really strikes me to hear you say, we, we, there's not enough space inside our building for us to have a circle time. And I have a fairly large classroom compared to other ones. I know you do. Yeah, you do. Right, and for you to have a safe circle like this one over here, inside would be your whole classroom space yeah would be literally the kids would have their back right mm -hmm. almost so you would have our classroom is just basically tables and um desks right and i immediately go to how long have humans been sitting in circles <laughs> around a fire having council and that we can't do that inside the building right now mm -hmm. so you've made that happen outside yeah and we have a couple more things i can show you okay I kind of like that this um, fork into three Yeah, I'm gonna, adventure. I'm going to take my turn and have it. Which one are you going to choose? And why <laughs> did you choose that one? Yeah. Do you feel a little risky because this one's a little higher up the ground? Right. That, and that one probably turn. bounces. And this one's really skinny. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to go this way. I'll stand here. Okay. What else do we got? Oh, behind the seat. Oh, so this is we behind, do behind it. Right. I have a little bell here that can gather the kids when it's time to, you know, come back to our circle area. Um, I put up our tools up here that we'll um, use. Um, all the kids are going to bring their own work clubs this year, so that's something that I asked oh, them to excellent. So to share them. Great so idea. Keep them right there in their equal toolbox. Yep. Um, we have a little shelf here that we can kind of put treasures that we find. You know, important to have a mm -hmm. nature museum that they can actually leave outside now. Yeah. Um, each kid's going to have um, a, this is just a cut up yoga mat that they can use for different purposes. Just some of my thoughts. They might have other thoughts, but if they want to sit down and um, work on their table, they might choose to like sit on this. Yep. Because sometimes the ground gets a little bit wet or it's cold, so this kind of provides an extra layer. Even in the winter when there's snow pants. Yeah. It, it won't go through their snow pants. The other thing they can use it as, um, we can use it as a work mat. So if they're going and finding like, go find 10 leaves, they can get their leaves and they can put them here as well. I imagine they'll find other uses for it, yep. but those are just a couple of the uses that um, I was going to use it. I made it a little bigger than the ones that we've had in the past, 
just so they have a little more workspace. For sure. Them. Yep. It's if they great. They do yoga class out here. We can do some yoga. Yeah. I also have um, the other half of these in the classroom for them. Oh, good. That kind of marks right. off their for spaces. space for just sit on the. Yeah. For. Yeah. And then this will go. This is just like a old tablecloth. It will go over top of it at night. So protect it if it like rains or snows. So you can be sure that you have a dry surface yeah. when you come out in the morning. And then I'll just clip it with these clips. Right. So smart. All these things that people are coming up with. <laughs> and then we will have That's a coat great. of, um, just, again, I just have such an amazing parent group, um, have built some coat hooks that will go in the back there that the kids can hang up their stuff. Um, like their snack box or just things to stay off the ground. Sure. That they'll be able to yeah. put over there. And then you were saying at um, the same parent who helped, who built the water hand washing station is going to help hang up a tarp because. Yeah, so we ordered a tarp. That's we know it will rain. Today. We know it will rain. <laughs> that's going to go over this area. Um, and we actually chose a white one, which will stand out a little more in the forest, but it'll provide more light. Light, yeah. So the green one sometimes is just really dark. Dark, yeah. So That's good reflection, I think, yeah. yeah. Oh, and I wonder if, will you get some shadow play on it? It'd be interesting oh, yeah. to know how thick that will be. Yeah, and if, it up on top. Yeah. Huh. It'll, yeah. That's great. So we will um, see when that shows up. And then we're going to you know, attach it with, um, are those crank straps? There's a yeah, like kind of like a come along kind of thing. I can't remember the name for it. They ratchet? Yeah, ratchet straps. Yep, <laughs> okay. So he has a big plan of how he's going to put it up. So Great. Stay tuned on that one. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll come back and get a little video of that. <laughs> so I'm excited to see um, that we'll be able to be here a little more. You know, obviously when it's not safe to be outside, like in torrential rains or if it's really, really cold, we will go inside if it's impacting their, their learning. Um, so we're not going to be out here if it's right. detrimental to the children. Right, yep. Um, but when it's safe for them to be out here, we will definitely be spending our time out here. Any Anything else that you want to say or share about your year coming up? or? You know, I had a really, I was trying to envision what kindergarten was look like in first grade. And I was feeling really sad for them. Like, that it wasn't going to be like what I know kindergarten or first grade to be. And then I just thought, I can't be sad for them. Like, this is their first and only time in kindergarten or first grade, and I need to make it the best that I can, whether it's inside or outside. Um, but particularly, this outdoor space has really yeah. gotten me really excited to have them at school, and um, I feel good that we have two options yeah. for them to have, to be indoors or outdoors, where they have a place where they can sing and play and have all this time to be creative. Um, I'm like super excited about it. So, so then they will be super excited yeah. about it. They are like any of them that come because I've had kids that have come after school for tours, so they can kind of see the space um, in the classroom, and then they can be out here. And their mouth, like they come out, and <laughs> it's like their dream. They're, so they're like, "This is school." <laughs> You're like, <laughs> yeah. "This is school in 2020." Jealous, they, uh... <laughs> Again, that that same parent group. We have so many eco volunteers that have come over the years, and they are really sad that they can't participate in it this year. Yes. So no outdoor, no outside of school staff or volunteers nope. coming in. Nope. So even in the outside, even in the outdoor setting, nope. even in the outdoor classroom. Okay. I think it's for contact tracing and being able to track who comes yep. in and out of the building, which which I understand. But that's one thing that kind of his parent relationships are so important to me and building that not only the community in the classroom but the kind of more global community with your your parents and community members and so we're just going to have to think of other creative ways to to do it to do it and to kind of show them what's yep. what's going on out here for them maybe like da you know daily or, yeah. or they just you know keep building we, <laughs> just keep building i know i was like what else can they make you <laughs> um when are you going to get the yurt the big yurt with the wood stove inside well, of it we'll have a shed they're going to make me a Storage oh, storage shed. shed. Okay, so great. Some things that we can, um, you know, might want to lock up at night if, yep. or on the weekends that we don't want to leave out. Like, there's some of those tools that I probably wouldn't leave out over the yeah. weekend, like maybe some of the saws and stuff that yep. I would take back inside. Um, but again, just to have stuff out here so we don't have to keep bringing things yeah. 
in and out, in and out. Yep. Well, I'm super excited for you. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for sharing with Thanks us. For coming. Thank you so much. And we're, we're, yeah, we're going to want to check back in. We're definitely going to want to check back in with you. Yeah. So, okay. Thanks for visiting. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay. We know where to find you. Okay. Thanks, Jillian.